Yadavendra Anandaji and uh, other distinguished people here and the member of the audience is all of you. I welcome you on behalf of the Institute and to today's lecture by, um, by Amitabha Mandabhata and a you know, well-known uh, geologist of India. He recently retired uh, from ge geological geological GSI, Geological Survey of India, you know, uh, from the positions of director. So, uh, so it will be a very interesting talk, hopefully. Just a few points I would like to make about his uh, contributions, because I cannot read the whole resume, that, that will take a lot of time. Uh, first thing that, you know, we'll be talking about, you know, is the climate change, that, you know, climate change and evolutions of human culture. Of course, climate change is the subject of uh, all kinds of writing these days, and all of you are familiar with that. But that's mostly man-made changes in climate. But he will not be talking about that. He will mostly be talking of, or all of it rather, the natural progression of climate since the creation of the Earth. So it will be a very interesting topic. And uh, also how the human culture, which also grew actually, or which developed actually based on the climate. To some extent, the climate was very important for that human culture also. Um, um, this, uh, and prof, um, uh, see, Bandhubhata, his uh, specialization is mostly in systematic geological mapping, marine geology, geo-environmental science, and geo-informatics. And uh, well, what, what, they did, what they did actually, he spent in a much, you know, almost all of his career camping or stationed in various parts of India and, uh, you know, and did a lot of explorations of the geological features of the country and made good contributions, very important contributions also. His uh, achievements include, I cannot say all of them again for the time's sake, contribution to the discovery in Kutch. Contribution, uh, sorry, contributions to the discovery of dinosaurs. Even the exact word actually. Yes, the discovery of dinosaur in Kutch, Gujarat. So I didn't know before that dinosaur existed in India also. So it, it is surprised to me. And um, then uh, he did also the, uh, among other things, another important thing, so the detailed study of tectonics in sea floor of Bay of Bengal and Andaman Sea, which is very important for various reasons, as he will be explaining to you. And uh, he made a lot of contributed publications, many, many, not only the technical publications, his professional publications, I mean, but uh, also in various areas, even novels, actually, he wrote. A lot of popular articles uh, in science and other areas were published in various newspapers of India, and uh, as well as magazines. And some of them, those newspapers and magazines in our Times of India, The Telegraph, Anandavaja. And um, so he wrote, in addition to that, he just wrote popular geoscience articles. So you probably have read, some of you might have read that his articles, that he read, the, you know, all the popular articles he has been writing for quite a while. And he received a lot of recognitions, and uh, one of them I've just mentioned is the recipient of. Coggin Brown Silver Medal from Mining, Geological, and Metallurgical Institute of India. And uh, so I will, I will request, you know, him to come to the dais, please, along with, you know, uh, Swami Yogananda Jadavindranji to give him some token of appreciation from the Punambia of the Institute. So please come. I just want to mention the next talk, 
It was on 6th of February by the director of Saha Institute of Physics, Professor Bikar Chakravarti. So it will be on econophysics related stuff. So it will be very interesting also. So thank you very much for coming, and I welcome all of you again. Please. Good evening to all. It's my pleasure to uh, give a lecture in this <coughs> esteemed institution. And uh, the subject is also interesting as he told uh, because uh, we are very much aware about the climate change uh, through newspapers, magazines, and other media. Uh, but that climate change and uh, my subject of climate change is quite different as it all. But uh, nonetheless, uh, this is not uh, different still uh, because uh, both are related. Uh, I will not uh, cover that uh, man-made uh, climate change, but uh, I am telling that one thing. Uh, Nature has immense power, tremendous power, where man is uh, only a very minuscule scale animal. So, uh, man can kill himself, but not the planet, that I can say. Uh, man in this climate change, as we enter into this hall, we feel some chillness. So, because of the man-induced climate, man-induced temperature change, but uh, in comparison to outside. But our climate change uh, is very much related to not only the human culture, but the evolution of life also. And evolution of Homo genus, that means human. So, in, to cover the subject, I will go for four uh, subtitles. One, climate change through the history of the earth. Next is the evolution of life. Third is evolution of genus Homo or human. And the last is evolution of human. Actually, evolution of human culture is related with every sub subject of this, all the sub subjects. First, climate change throughout the history of the earth. Now, we know that our universe, you all know, I think, so I will not go in details also. 13.7 billion years ago, this universe came, it evolved, and uh, some say that there are other universes also. So, what is actually infinity that is beyond our conception? If this, because we cannot conceive this universe to its infinite scale. So, if some other universes are also there, so our concept of infinity goes beyond our senses. And when it uh, formed, it was very hot and dense, highly dense. And it started with a tremendous speed of expansion, as well as diminishing the temperature. So, Temperature started changing from the very beginning of the universe. So, temperature is changing. Our universe has 125 billion galaxies, and our Milky Way is one of that galaxy. And this galaxy contains 100 billion stars, one of the stars, Sun. It is only 5 billion years old. And it has a life of another 5 billion years. So, the history of the universe, this 
starts with this and goes up to this level, the extreme one, and it is still expanding, still expanding. Stars and galaxies, how it looks. Now coming to the planet, our planet, the Earth. <coughs> Stars form from the dust in the universe. First galaxies, stars form, then a combination of stars form galaxies. And this formation of stars is a dust they, with the uh, gravitational pool, they call is, they concentrate in a position, in a, in a, in a place, or in, a, in space, in sunlight in space, and they start get Dense, dense, they become dense too. And in its core, the nuclear fusion, the nuclear reaction circuit, so that it get it tremendous heat develop, that heat energy gives the light. So the stars are we see the stars are very bright, it emits light. That is not the case for the planets. Planets fail to make a star because it is its that power of condensation is not that much as a star. So that is our sun also developed like this, and our planet when our form it is also really hot and highly dense. And the temperature from that time, from 4.6 billion years, 4600 million years ago, when what the temperature was, that comes down to, it was a tremendous temperature, and that comes down to average surface temperature, 15 degrees centigrade today. But we get some sense of the temperature, of temperature because the core is 7000 degrees centigrade Earth's core. So the universe is getting cooling, our Earth is also getting cooling. This is the artist's impression. Now when Earth formed, then it has three layers. The inner one is core and the outer one is crust and the intermediate is mantle. You all know all this. The crust contains this where we stand, where we live, the continental crust, continents and oceans. So there are two there's two divisions of the crust is one is oceanic crust and another is continental crust. This oceanic crust and continental crust the stay together, the oceanic crust formed in the process of, uh, now first the crust formed, then the crust got uh, split, then the lava, molten lava from the mantle came out, it spreads, then it got thickened, got thickened, and then the crust got thickened, and then that uh, shallow, that uh, shallow part becomes much more deeper and form the huge uh, vessels like features. So this type of things it form so many uh, from the <coughs> uh, crust of the arc, from the surface of the arc. So there are so many oceans, so many uh, depressions and so, so many higher eleva elevated lands. And in the depressions, uh, through the process of uh, climate change and water vapor for formation, the water came and it filled with uh, water and sea form. So the, this oceanic crust, I will not go to the details of the formation of sea. But uh, this oceanic crust and 
this continental crust, they are on the upper surface of the earth. But this oceanic crust and continental crust, they have the root <laughs> in the upper mantle. They have the root in the upper mantle, upper mantle, uh, and in the upper uh, and in the mantle, what happens? There is always the formation of heavy minerals and lighter minerals. The heavy minerals uh, go down to the um, go down, go, heavy minerals go down and the lighter minerals go up. So in this process, the up and down, there is a circulation, for, circulation formation of circulation in the mantle in that uh, highly viscous media. <coughs> modern media and in depth that circulation makes the convection current. This convection current is a, is a tremendous force that uh, that uh, gets up and makes the crust, the solid crust split into two. So this splitting may and it split and the lava comes and it pushes. When the lava comes it pushes the um, from the both sides. You will see the next slide how it goes. It pushes the from the both. This lava comes and it pushes the both side and it goes out. So when it is going outside, then the, this is the oceanic crust. It is moving now. It, it and uh, side by side there are continental crusts also. So the oceanic crust and the continental crust they are both moving, but sometimes and in the earlier time, uh, this certain small oceanic crust and continental crust were there. There are so, so many crusts were there. And they got co uh, collided, these continental crusts got collided. And they got welded sometimes. And again they got separated with the same force, they got separated. So in this way, the formation of the continents and oceans going on. So the now we know that the continents are moving or wandering. So when the continents are wandering, then how it is wandering? So I told that uh, uh, primitive day, in the primitive time of the art, these continents got welded with uh, got welded and make the these uh, land masses got welded and make continents, make bigger land mass. <laughs> now in twelve hundred. Uh, million years, MA is million years, in 1200 million years to 750 million years, the, at, at that time, the, uh, this uh, continents got joined together. They got joined together and formed a supercontinent that is called Rodinia. Now this Rodinia, the extension of Rodinia is from the equator 60 degree north and south. This is equatorial based uh, uh, this uh, continental mass, a huge continental mass, supercontinent mass. Then this Rodinia got disintegrated again. Disintegrated and the continents are moving, moving, moving and they then settle to the north-south, uh, north pole to south pole, this meridian uh, for in uh, adjustment they form north-south. <laughs> So in the north, so that is that becomes a one single uh, supercontinent that is called Pangaea supercontinent, and a and a one single ocean was there at that time, one single supercontinent and one single super ocean. So one is Pangaea, another is Panthalassa, is the ocean. Panthalassa. Now Pangaea contains the northern uh, two parts in the northern part of the hemisphere, the North America and Eurasia, and in the southern part of uh, equ uh, equator, there Australia, Antarctica, uh, Africa, South Africa, India. So these uh, five continents they were there, quarrels together, but they were joined. Now, in 250 million years ago, they again got separated, separated. The Pangaea got separated. This, uh, pan, uh, this, uh, 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 this got separated, and uh, this Gondwana land comes further southward, and the upper continents go further northward. 
So in this way, once they come together, another they got disjointed. This movement goes on, and last movement, last uh, movement grows uh, broken on 65 million years ago. When this southern part of the Gondwana land, they got disintegrated, and now what we see the geography of the world, it established. Uh, it is not a very old one, but. It started in 65 million years ago. I think you are not getting bored. So this is the way how it got uh, disintegrated. Once there, there it was uh, one, then they will disintegrate and they go and form there. So this is South America, this is India, this India goes and meets there. Huh? And uh, you see the when India will meet there, the formation of Himalaya will be there. So this is the way the uh, Pangea and Gondwana they got. Now coming to the climate and temperature change. So our subject is coming now. Now this is this uh, uh, reference. This will later uh, uh, come into the reference. So I gave you the, this much introduction. So uh, climate and temperature, climate change is essentially a global and natural phenomenon. This is very important. It is absolutely natural and it is a global phenomenon. We still, we, we know that the, our uh, refrigerator and this AC, uh, they have the thermostat to control the temperature so that it uh, goes to the optimum and then again come back. So Earth has also this thermostat, and this thermostat acts uh, to control the Earth's temperature. There is no one to deviate this uh, temperature, play of temperature and climate uh, for the Earth. There is no force uh, there to play on this uh, nature's force. So we find that alternate warming and cooling going on. Now there is a major cooling right from the birth of the earth and in the process there are so many major cooling and warming phases up there in many scales. So in right from the diurnal stage, from the day and night we find the temperature change to the millions of years scale. This going on, and I uh, will come later that uh, what are the recent, uh, recent past, what are the changes. Uh, each change leaves its signature in rocks. So geologists, they are the only person who are trained to study these signatures of the rocks and say and tell that what was the environment it, the earth came through through the rocks, study of rocks and the fossils. Uh, Geologist, when I, I was uh, in the field uh, in my student days in Rajasthan, one of my field guide Seeing me studying the rocks with hammer and chisel and some climbing clinometer and some very nominal things, and seeing the rock with the hand, with ears, with every man touching the rock in a very sensitive way to understand, to sense that it's pulse. So he told me, Sir, you are a doctor, you are a doctor of the rocks. So, Actually, later, many many years later, I I sense it that yes, geologist, uh, doctor of rocks. So, uh, so the, this uh, signatures they live in the rocks and fossils, but in shoreline areas, in coastal lines, you know, the coastal line is the. Uh, sea and land, the border line. In the coastal lines, when the temperature falls, then what happens? When the temperature falls, the ice forms in the polar regions 
and when the ice forms, it takes water from the sea. So the sea water level goes down. It regrays. And when again the climate warms up, the ice melts, then it rises again. Sea, sea level rises. So this rise and fall, it leaves its impression in the coastal line. And we have seen so many, there are so many uh, way to observe all these changes. And for you to simple, for any of us to simply say that in the tidal effects we can see the water level goes up and down in sea and in rivers also. So this, this, uh, these are glaciations and tectonic movements of the earth, this uh, when it splits and again coalesce, disintegrates and integrates. So uh, there at that time also the sea water would change. <coughs> now we will go to the history of climate change. So uh, I told you that the climate is getting cooling right from the day of its uh, birth of the earth. But there are some phases of warming and cooling. So when cooling, the major cooling part was, is called the ice house and major warming is called the greenhouse. So ice house, the first recorded and confirmed ice house we got in the 900 million years ago. And it continued till 550 million years ago. Then again warming, then again second ice house, 440 million years ago for a brief period, say 50 to 100 million years. Then again greenhouse, then again <coughs> another ice house. And last one is fourth ice house that started 3 million years ago, only, only 30 lakh years ago. And it is still continuing. <coughs> so in no way, we are facing any devastating warming because the, our, the nature is controlling us. We are passing through an ice house stage. But still, it is in the ice house stage. But within each ice house and greenhouse, there are various scales of again warming and cooling, warming and cooling. That I will come to. So this part is okay. Huh? Now what are the causes of this climate change? We are talking about the climate change, climate change, climate change. But what are the main causes? Sun. Sun is the storehouse of all the energy for Earth or for any other planet of the Sun. Sun is the sole storehouse of energy. It controls the oceanic circulation, changes the luminosity, and it directly related to the carbon cycle of the art. Carbon cycle is very important. Now you, you will you have read in the media, uh, learn from the media that carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is really a uh, very uh, important part of the making the um, climate cooling or warming. And carbon cycle act, but it, this carbon controlled by the sun, how much it will be. And carbon cycle acts as heat controlling mechanism. What are the other factors? This is also a very important factor, the obliquity of the Earth's axis. You all know that the Earth's axis is uh, uh, the, not uh, to the north and south of the uh, orbit, but uh, to the, at an angle to that. This this, uh, this earth axis also oscillates, oscillates up to 23.5 degree. And when the northern part of the earth axis is pointing towards the sun, so always northern hemisphere feels the heat of the sun, but the southern hemisphere is relatively cool. And in the so that why the southern hemisphere, in the southern pole, south pole, it maintains a 
glacial climatic uh, condition, obviously. <coughs> The outer changes are albedo changes because of the continent's movement and atmospheric changes, the greenhouse gas, distribution of oceans and continents and other factors, meteorite impact, tectonism, these are all causes for the cooling. When the meteorite in 65 million years ago, huge meteorites bombarded on the earth and then uh, the huge dust uh, came out of the earth. Uh, and in that does the uh, total uh, sun was uh, covered uh, so the earth got cooled and that is one of the reason for dinosaur extinction of dinosaurs and uh, so, so many other animals solar storms and flares and small circulars and El Nino Li you have uh, heard all these names uh, by this time so they are all important for this Evidences, where we find these evidences? I told you, in rocks, in fossils, and in the chemical, geochemical, analytical results. In the rocks, when glacier forms, then it, it takes the uh, bedrock where, over which it forms. It takes the bedrocks and it uh, encompasses that rock and uh, the glaciation, glaciers are there and when the glaciers uh, there is deglaciation or unbound of the glaciers unbound of the glaciers then it leaves that those rocks onto the bed surface so studying those rocks we can see we, we, we come to know that where are the uh, glacial effects had been those days. And other factors uh, are the sudden appearance, disappearance and influx of the animals. Sudden disappearance of the animals that is also due to climate change that will come. An appearance of the animals and influx and huge explosion of the animals. They are also due to the change. Now we will see that uh, those four uh, those four ice houses, how it forms, what are the causes of formation of those ice houses? We may question that uh, suddenly how these houses form in those years. So, first is that when those small uh, land masses, continents, they got separated due to the force of the earth that uh, comes from the mantle. When it separates, disintegrates, then the oceans form in between those continents. And as many ocean surfaces will be exposed, there will be more vaporization. Uh, water will be more, will more vaporize. So this vaporization, huge vaporization goes to the atmosphere. And atmosphere was also full of carbon dioxide, then it absorbs the carbon dioxide. And when the carbon dioxide is getting, the concentration of carbon dioxide minimizes, then heart gets cool and the glacial effect starts. So, this is the first, this is the cause, main cause of the first ice house. Now, uh, this uh, water. When the water vapor uh, absorbs the carbon dioxide, it forms the carbonic acid which rains and on the rocks and it reacts with the rocks and the rocks get disintegrated, it got powder and flow to the sea through river, flow through river, uh, through river and there is a carbonate depositions. So this and another thing that when the continents got dis, uh, disintegrated, there are eruptions of volcanoes, uh, major eruptions of volcanoes and this volcanic eruption, this uh, along with that volcanic eruption, the carbon dioxide also comes out and it uh, goes to the atmosphere. So, once there is a uh, carbon dioxide minimum, another is maximum. 
So this alternate com uh, concentration of carbon dioxide, uh, alternate uh, minimum and maximum concentration of carbon dioxide goes on and this happened at least four times in the 250 million years range. So these are the, at, at that time, this was the geographical constituents of the Earth. Okay, the continents were in this fashion, they were in. And these dots were, were the <coughs> glacial deposits, were there, delights were there. So from that, we got that, the, and uh, almost all the, except Antarctica, almost all the continents, they were affected by this glaciation. There's a major glaciation during that period. So at least four uh, cooling and warming effect got during that area and all the continents. Now when that uh, ice house uh, vanishes, vanishes uh, this uh, intensity of the glaciation get diminished, then we see there is a earth is warming up and there is a huge explosion of animals. That is the first day that is the huge explosion of animals and we find that the multicellular organisms were exploded like anything. Because Earth, when uh, first was unicellular animal, single cell animal, then the multicellular. So multi for, multi animals of multicellular life, formation of multicellular life was exploded like anything. And now we come to the, what was the reason for the first uh, glaciation? the formation of the ice house. Second and third formation of the ice house was different, totally different. Now the earth, the southern hemisphere of the earth got sufficient time to be cool. So they, now the uh, movement, wandering or movement of the continents, it, it, was, it was passing through the southern pole. So, whatever the continents was passing through the southern pole or very close to it, then all these continents got cold and glaciated. So, this was the reason for the second and uh, next also uh, this uh, glaciation, uh, ice house. But this uh, third ice house, Parmacarboniferous ice house, here the, most of the Gondwana continents, I told you that uh, Australia, Antarctica, South uh, Africa, South America, and India, these five continents, they, they were extensively glaciated during that period and they were extensively glaciated during that period and uh, there was a uh, tremendous fall of sea level because huge area were glaciated so there was a huge fall of sea level also, some something about 300 meter or like that. So these areas, the shadow areas, they were all affected by this glaciation. Now, when the Gondwana land got separated, you that Gondwana land separate, got separated, then all the continents they are moving apart. They are moving apart. But before Gondwana land got separated, there was a separation of the that single continent, the Pangaea and Gondwana. They got detached, and in that detachment there comes a sea in between that is called a Tethys Sea. So this Tethys Sea, it was, it was equatorial circulation, Tethys Sea. Earlier Pantherosa was a meridional circulation, and this is Tethys, this equatorial circulation. So uh, this Tethys Sea, uh, when they got, then the Indian continent it moves northward, for first north is then moved northward and Tethys Sea got shrinked. Tethys Sea got shrinked. Now there is no Tethys Sea. 
and in the area of the KGC, whatever sediments were deposited during that time, it got erupted and in the process, geological processes, the Himalaya came up. And before that, Alps came up in the same way. So, uh, climate changed to warmer after 250 million years. And, but it was not totally warming because the processing, processing of the, the uh, process of the carbon dioxide and H2O, this is going on for a long time and it is getting warmer and cooling, warmer and cooling for specific periods. Uh, so, the thermostat always working. It is not all that the warming is continuing that. And there was a heavy rainfall at that time because of the uh, H2O content was more in the atmosphere. So, and this, uh, there is a large green of vegetations, uh, almost the entire world, and those from those vegetations now we get the coal. And from those, uh, the Tethys Sea, the uh, short areas of the Tethys Sea, whatever it was, the uh, shore areas at the time, there only the, uh, the Sporaminifera, one uh, microplankton, Microplankton animal was there in the sea. They got deposited. There was a huge flourish of those uh, for formations, and it got deposited. And now we get the oils in all that belt. So this is the area. Uh, the this area, the Tethys Sea, flow through this area, and these squares are the coal deposits. And these are the oil deposits now we find. So this is the area that the Tethys Sea was flowing. So here the foraminiferal depositions were there. Foraminiferal uh, activity of foraminiferal was there. And when they uh, died, died, they got deposited in this. So in the geological processes, this foraminifera with the oil. Now, when the, uh, this uh, gondola got separated, disintegrated, there was a uh, opening of sea as well as there was a huge uh, volcanic eruptions. That volcanic eruptions made the uh, carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Means the carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So uh, the water vapor absorbs the carbon dioxide, the temperature falls again. Uh, uh, volcanic eruptions are there again come So there's an alternate going on warming and cooling. And in that process, the uh, many uh, animals, including dinosaurs, uh, disappeared. And the, the last, the, in between 250 million years and 38 million years, this process was going on. A huge warming, within a huge warming uh, field, this uh, warming and cooling and heavy rains, th this were going on. But from 38 million years ago, the earth get permanent cooling uh, thing in the southern hemisphere because the uh, ice, a permanent formation of ice, what, what earlier what happened, the ice formed and degraciated, but now, 38 million years ago only, the ice got permanent deposition in the Antarctica. So that is the beginning and after, after 38 million years, in the history of the post 38 million years, the art never goes back to the, that stage. So 38, from 38 million years, the permanent cooling, permanent ice formation in the uh, Antarctica and ice cap formed 14 million years ago. But northern hemisphere was not that much cool till that time. Northern hemisphere got the ice only 3 million years ago when the last ice house set in. Only 3 million, only 30 lakh years ago, the northern hemisphere, North Pole, got the first ice. And when it got the first ice, then the entire globe got the process of glaciation and deglaciation. Earlier in northern hemisphere, there was no glaciation uh, record. 
But now, after that, after three million, three million years, uh, in the last three million years, the northern hemisphere also got the record of glaciation. Severe climatic change was there during that time. In, in the three, last three million years, at least 30 glacial interglacial cycles were there. 30 times interglacial interglacial cycles were there, there 30 times warming and grooming processes were there. And in the last 1 million years, 4 warming cooling incidents were there. In the last 1 million years, in the last 10 lakh years. And the last glaciation was 56,000 years ago only. Last glaciation was 56,000 years ago and it continued till 15,000 years ago. And when the sea level dropped 20 meter. Causes, most of all same, there were previous causes, but here the axis rotation and other tilting of uh, further axis, uh, tilting further of the earth's axis, the surging of ice sheet, and increase of CO2 concentration. So all these causes are there. Now, you see in the last 15,000, from 15,000 years to till date, we are passing through interglacial phase, that means we are passing through a warming phase. So there is no surprise that earth is going, getting hot. Earth will get hot. And for another 25,000 years it will go on. Yeah. As per geological record, because 42,000 uh, that uh, cycle now we are passing through. So uh, uh, going on, but there is no uh, reason for getting worried because warming and cooling phases will go on. So uh, some of the warming and cooling phases you see uh, from uh, cool climate prevail in uh, 8820 and 8690 and uh, this 8000 the uh, 8,000 years before present, 8,000 years ago, the temperature rose so much, it has not yet reached that much temperature. Then again it dropped and the sea level was also. The sea level fluctuation was also there and I will tell you the climate oscillations in last 2500 years, 200 BC to 600 BC warming period, 600 to 900 cooling period, 900 to 1300 warming then again cooling, then 1850 warming period. Now, though you you might have uh, noticed that uh, in the 60s and 70s, the uh, climate of uh, Calcutta and uh, West Bengal and so many parts of the world was uh, much cooler than now this because in, from 1940 to 75, there was short spell of cold climate. And the temperature rises in the last century. So therefore global warming and cooling is not a new phenomenon. What we get from the media that this is a new phenomenon. This is not a new phenomenon. It is going on. Now I will come to the evolution of life. So uh, the difference of the uh, rock and the life is the multiplication of the molecules. So a group of molecules they come in rock, these molecules don't multiply or self replicate, and here in life they are self replicate and self organized. And evolution is the change in the inherited characteristics of the biological populations. So there is no standard model of uh, origin of life, I will not go in that details, but. Uh, Life uh, came, uh, record of the first life we got in 38,000, 3800 million years ago. First life recorded in Earth, in this planet, 3800 million years ago. And the stomatolites is the first form of uh, sea life in India also, in Rajasthan, uh, Udaipur, stomatolite deposits are there. So, uh, in a simply, simple way, the formation of life 36 million years ago, sing, simple single cell, then 1000 million multicellular life, then simple animal, bilaterals, then fish, 
500 million years ago, land plants, then 400 million years ago, insects and seeds came. 360 million, our first amphibians came in 360, 300 reptiles, mammals came 200, then barbs, flowers. Primates came 60 million years ago. These three we will be interested in our later study. Primates, then the family, hominidae, great apes came 20 million years ago and 2.5 million years ago, that's 25 lakh years ago, the genus Homo. And Homo sapiens, sapiens came 2 lakh years ago only. Only 2 lakh years ago. We are not very old. But uh, when this is the appearance, that the disappearance of the uh, animals also there. So it is there you know, when the uh, oxygen concentration gets more than anaerobic uh, animals, they got uh, disappeared. Then uh, in 252 million years ago, the trilobites and sea animals, most of the sea animals got extinct. And in 66 million years ago, 50% of the animals got extinct. This is the age of early life, this is the age of early life, began 600 million years ago, this is the age of reptiles, different reptiles including dinosaurs are there, and this is the age of mammals. Now evolution of human. Mammals can be told that 200 million years before now, Birds and mammals are endotherms, they generate heat from themselves, by themselves. And primates, the scientific name of monkeys, is the most advanced form of mammals. They came in 60 million years ago. Humans and primates have many similarities in physiological, anatomical, cell structure, blood groups. Earlier, uh, these primates were uh, tree living, arboreal. So, when the ar arboreal was the uh, arboreal life was there, then there are so many necessities they uh, required. First of all, that uh, to live in a tree, one has to be uh, very good grip. So, earlier animals they had a very this type. Uh, the four limbs were not in the opposite. Now we will see the four limbs. This limb is in the opposite direction of this four, four limbs. So the four limb of the uh, hand, uh, first uh, frontal two uh, limbs, they are they got uh, different uh, face to face uh, so that they had the good grip over the and at the same time. Since they were in the uh, tree living, so they got the uh, snout uh, reduced, snout reduced and uh, the eyes they came in, uh, in front side and these eyes become the uh, stereo vision. So that why they can estimate the uh, depth, distance and height. So that from uh, jumping from one tree branch to another tree branch, there is no form, no accident. So this type of uh, anatomical changes going on in the primates. Uh, and uh, whenever there is a, so there is a very uh, well coordinated uh, action between the vision and the, uh, this, uh, Limbs, neuromotor, uh, limb, neuromotor action and uh, vision, very perfect. Otherwise, there will be a fall. So this uh, this requires good uh, brain, good uh, brain cells activation of the brain cells. So they, in that, so everything goes at a simultaneous stage, so that the brain cells number of cells got increased at the activation and the. Uh, the sensory nerves they are also get activated very much so that the uh, cranial volume of the uh, brain that is getting increased step by step so all these all these are uh, these anatomical changes they are very useful for the uh, 
societal innovation or cultural evolution. Now, uh, evolution, this uh, first primitive, this one, first appearance of apes, then after proto human, Australopithecus, 4 million years ago, 2.5 million years ago, primitive human appearance of genus Homo, 2 lakh years ago, modern man. So, this is the uh, skeletal structure changes from. Now you see the orangutan, gorilla, they were not to uh, this type of the walking, uh, uh, not to walking. Uh, but uh, bipedalism came first in Gibong, Simpanji also got something, some in between those two. Cranial evolution, you see, the, it is uh, going larger and larger. Homo sapiens, that is the maximum, 1330 or 1350 cc. <coughs> so I told you that the thumb and the other four fingers come face to face position for farm grip. Now, when the farm grip, uh, it, uh, this was required for cleaning, eating, and hunting. Now, uh, uh, hunting, but Oh, okay, uh, come later. Okay. Bring, uh, bring the object before eyes. And at the same time, when the stereo vision came, they could identify the two, three colors. Because the, the color of the fruit and leaves and uh, other things, they do what they will eat. But it, it is the nature's gift that uh, it gave, it developed the, those things, the color, color, that color identification. At least color difference. The constant interaction with the environment and fast response, that is another way to get the brain enrichment with the <coughs> more uh, cells. And gradual, the, uh, this uh, passing from laying eggs and breastfeeding to birth of immature, and then maybe the kangaroo because uh, immature, so that way they put it in the pocket and then the uh, mature baby. But still, uh, okay, that will come. Uh, capability of learning, observation, higher primates came down from trees and started living on the ground. Sex specific dimorphism in monkeys we observed. So, this is the uh, four limbs characteristic how it changed and that is the clinging folding grip got and the eating purpose also. Sexual dimorphism, groups living and socialization. And this is gorilla was found hunting with a stick. Yeah. It observed in uh, Africa in some jungle. It was not trained. It, uh, now, human evolution party. So, I will go uh, very uh, short uh, in a particular format that genus Homo. It started with Homo habilis in 2.5 million years ago. Then it uh, Acaster, then Erectus, Hedelbergensis, Neanderthal, Fluences, and Rodenses are area specific in Indonesia and Zambia, and then Homo sapiens, the man. It came. Man is only global. Other, others are Africa and East Africa. Sorry to say. Time duration, adult height, weight, cranial capacity, fossil record, first discovery record. So, Habilis is the first human. Now, major uh, among the major anatomical changes, the bipedalism is the main thing, but uh, when it came down from the tree, then bipedalism is the main thing. Gorilla and chimpanzee, natural workers, australopithecus, full bipedal, and when it becomes a full bipedal, then the hands become free, and they were more quick, locomotion was more, and reaching, carrying, hunting, it was very, very easy. So, when uh, hands become free, they, de they could develop their other activities. 
So, and these other activities lead them to the evolution of the social and cultural things. Okay, brain cortex volume, skeletal changes, skeletal changes also uh, there in column, pelvic, legs, knee, and foramen magnum, that means the uh, vertebral column, and the nervous cord, what come in uh, uh, in other uh, mammals, what happens? Uh, they wear their long snout and the, the sacrum, that is in the back side. Mm. But in man, it came in the central position so that I, we can um, uh, Put our head straight, upright. So, foramen magma and bipedal is short. Uh, another thing is that if bipedal is for, for bipedal uh, action, this uh, pelvic they become very short. In other the animals, they, it is very broad, but this pelvic becomes short. So, that's why it becomes uh, difficult for, uh, for carrying the baby through the canal. So, uh, and uh, since human uh, brain is uh, much larger, so uh, what happens, the, the gestation period it gets reduced and it comes out. And that is why, why we uh, uh, give our children more time to develop. So, because they are, they are not fully developed uh, so, and they, they can't walk uh, before 12 months. Uh, they can't uh, do their own work as the uh, dogs and uh, children, uh, dogs and uh, cows, they, their uh, children, they do. So, it takes much time for them. And uh, the children are more dependent on mothers and it is another cause of monogamous relationship. <coughs> The reduced degree of sexual dimorphism, it also, the increased importance of vision rather than smell. So we have lost many senses, including a great sense is smell. Uh, we have lost many senses. Uh, a smaller gut, loss of body hair, evolution of sweat glands, sweat glands develop uh, in just under the skin, and a change in the shape of dental arcade, development of chin, styloid, and Descendant larynx. Uh, Developed larynx is most important for our vocabulary. So this is another anatomical change. Now we will come to the last part, human culture. <coughs> One thing it is very important I feel but uh, every animal, it is not the human, every animal has its own culture. Now what is culture? That means how we lead our life, that is the culture. So every animal, whatever the uh, we insignificant insects or anything, every animal has its own culture of living. So necessity prompts innovation. So. When this homo habilis, they came, first, before that, when the, the pre human animals, they came down from the tree, they were attacked by the wild animals. Now, what to do? Either they have to go away and flee, or they climb into the tree again. So, in this way, they were saving themselves from the predators, from the attack. But Homo habilis, when it appeared on the earth, they found out some unique idea. The, instead of going away, fleeing away, they started throwing stones towards, towards them. And that is the beginning of the human culture. And that is the beginning, what I said, the science of geology. Because they could identify that soils cannot be thrown much distance, only stones can be thrown. The science is there, the stones are heavy. Now, this is the beginning of the human culture. So, stone has become a tool to use for <coughs> protection, for saving. Now, they are getting various types of 
with stones of various sizes and shape. Now, they had the grip by throwing stones, they got their wrist very uh, perfectly uh, straight, very perfect strength, and then they thought that we can make the stones usable in some other way. So, what they did, they uh, got the uh, pebbles, the rounded or uh, elongated pebbles from the river bed because river bed pebbles are getting uh, ferruginous so that why it can easily be broken. They got it half and they make the chip one side as uh, sharpening and other side modular so that they can have a grip and they throw. So in this way the necessity makes the thing. So in this way they are going to develop themselves step by step. But these changes they took a very long time. Say millions of years they took uh, to have these changes. You see this from Homo habilis to Homo habilis whatever uh, stone tools they made it, it, it remained for several million years there was, because there was no necessity. But when Homo erectus and Homo adrastus came out of Africa and they came to European Europe, uh, Europe, then the climate was different, the animals were different, the stones were different. So what they did, they made their brain activated again and they make the new kinds of tools. So in this way, the uh, evolution. Uh, uh, evolution going on. So major advances this Homo habilis, this, this is all known tools, then Homo erectus came. They, Homo erectus is the first who has the control of fire. Fire came out, came much earlier, but Homo erectus they have the control of fire, fire. And then Homo hegel virgins, they built children. In Japan, Shishubu, there was a there, there are indications of making uh, cottages by these Homo hegel virgins uh, some uh, more than 70,000 years back. And then in the Terminances, their clothing, they, they could uh, they have their own language, but uh, with uh, small uh, words, not very full word, some signal type. So this is the Homo erectus cave. Now the speed of the human culture evolution accentuates in the last 50,000 years. Now uh, these are the uh, things which are the evolution, uh, this is cultural evolution. Another main thing is the uh, social learning. Social learning is the major uh, part, the, recently the biologists they say that and archaeologists, the social learning is the major part of uh, evolution. So what is social learning? Now, say uh, what we got from our childhood, we see our elders to do all these things and we imitate that one. So in, from imitation, since man is, came in the last in the evolutionary tree, so they can they have that intelligence uh, through their brain power to observe all the things and whatever they will like for whatever they will they require in the right situation they apply that one so there is uh, little effort to innovate but there are some per there are some persons also who uh, in, instead of imitating all the time they could innovate something. I say when the man goes to the high, uh, higher latitude in our areas in the colder uh, climate area, then they innovate something. 
Then they innovate something, hot innovation, then they could uh, kill their uh, animals and they use their uh, skin for clothing. So in this way, the social learning is a, one of the major uh, evolution thing. And another thing is the language. So these are the keywords and the ornaments. <coughs> okay. So uh, other organisms, they change their themselves for their food. But man evolution is not for that. It is for the causality. Causality. That means whatever man evolution of man came in the time at the time of two lakh years ago, that was when there is a severe climate change. So with every climate change after that it innovates new ideas, new ideas, how to survive without uh, surrendering to the nature, they get the lesson from the nature just to fight out and survive. So that, in that way the evolution, uh, uh, the culture evolved further. So, and uh, the uh, development of pharynx is the major thing for the language and uh, language uh, with this uh, Neanderthals, they used language but in only uh, some uh, consonants they could say. Only man could uh, utter the vowels and uh, then they can got the uh, Neanderthal had limited speech. So, and in the last 10,000 years in the uh, history of evolution, the cultivation, language and literature are the final stages of evolution so far. Then uh, evolution, another evolutionary uh, reason for the uh, faster evolution for migration, when it came out from Africa one lakh year ago for the first time and then in the second migration 50,000 years ago. And then the first to the Europe, Asia, and then to the higher altitudinal areas. This is the migration route. So I am coming to the last point: advantage of climate change. So we, we, we should not abuse the climate change. There are so many advantages of climate change, and even now, even now. When the uh, ice caps in the uh, Arctic regions are uh, getting melted, we all, there is also advantage. I can get that. So uh, we have seen that the uh, ice houses were there, and every ice house in the first ice house, after the first ice house, there is explosion of life. And the second ice house, there are so many species were destroyed, and a new species came, and. Uh, in the gorilla came in the cold and dry climate six million years ago. Then the earliest genus Homo came to find five million years ago at the end of Pliocene climatic deterioration. That means the earth is getting warming up. At that time, the Homo genus came, the human came, the early human came. And initiation of Pleistocene Ice Age to lack the beginning of Homo sapiens. So men came in a very cold situation. <coughs> During intervening period of the warming period, human culture development is remarkable. Now when they are going to the uh, extreme climate, the uh, cold climate, then one type of uh, culture, when they go to the warmer climate, another type of culture. So and then both sides mix and the cultural development is more. So these, these are the things which we can uh, get if the Arctic regions get uh, deglaciated, then habitation activation. I think I have taken much time. Thank you for your kind cooperation and attention. Just one question. Huh? How they migrated during those times? From Africa to some ground? Some questioning, please. I know that you have a lot of questions and comments. 
But please wait until somebody takes a microphone to you. You know, if you raise your hand, somebody will take the microphone. So that everybody can hear your questions, so that they can gain from the answers and questions both. So please, there's a microphone, uh, the, the gentleman there, up there. So you, can, you will get a chance to ask questions, all of you, if you have uh, any comments. Yeah. Not the gentleman there, green. Yeah. Those days, uh, how, those days, how they migrated from one to the other. Turn it off. As you told, that, uh, they migrated from uh, Africa to Europe. And the migration also, that photo of the slide also shown. Uh, but uh, how they used to move. At uh, that time, there was no communication or transportation or uh, even thousand years ago, also there was no transportation. But they used to move around by walking. Only. They went by walking. Uh, the thing is that they they took the route of the coastal area first, and there is all alternative uh, suggestion also that they cross through the Sahara. They cross through Sahara. So that is the second alternative. So if the uh, coastal area they take, then they take the go by Iran and other things, then they uh, cross the, uh, that, uh, that time, uh, since it was a, uh, uh, climate was cold and uh, it was 50, uh, 6,000 years the last glaciation uh, happened, started. So the sea level got, uh, sea level came down, uh, uh, fall, and uh, they crossed the uh, Mediterranean and uh, they went to the Rio at that time. So there was no problem for that. And in, in during that, those days, the many uh, uh, islands, even the Andaman Islands, now what we see the Zarban and other things, they were of that time. Because at that time, the uh, sea level, due to the, due to the sea level fall, the land was, the other one lands were connected with uh, from Parma and other sites. So they came there, but when the sea level rose, they got separated. They got isolated, and so they, uh, they couldn't develop their culture. There's no further evolution of that culture. Because culture is such a thing that if you don't uh, mix, if you don't interact, uh, then you cannot develop. If you stay yourself within a thing, within a house, then you cannot develop your uh, culture. So, uh, so that why they are in that situation. Next question, please. Uh, sir, how do you foresee in the next say fifty thousand years with global warming uh, the shape of North Europe and North America in in counting the context of uh, human culture? You know, how do you how do you foresee huh? how do you foresee human culture uh, transgressing in the next fifty thousand years, considering that we have global warming and climate change, particularly in North America and Northern Europe? Uh, uh, I told you that uh, the global warming is going on. It is okay, but uh, intermittent uh, cool environment is also there. So that we are still living now. If the global warming was continuous, then in the last 50,000 years, we could not have been here. So the, I told you that there is a thermostat always, and it, 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 it takes care of all its uh, living animals. Yeah, so um, uh, earth is not taking care of man, but all, it's all habitants. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there is no fear of uh, that thing. Uh, but we are about, about human culture, that's what you said. Uh, cult, what, what about human culture? It is very difficult to say because uh, now uh, human culture is going in different way. We are more we are going to be more mechanized. Uh, we, we have lost all our senses. Now you see, in nowadays when I go for the morning walk, I see that most of the people are uh, plugging their ears. Uh, so how do we develop their culture then? Exactly. If they don't uh, listen to the bard songs and the uh, fresh air, they, it doesn't come to the ears. How do we develop? So this is very difficult situation. Now how it will develop, how it will go, that uh, anybody's case. <laughs> Thank you. Next question.
Next question. So anybody here actually saw some hands sometime ago? So actually, time. holes in the ozone layer, that is man-made. So that is uh, quite a matter of concern. So what is the ramification in the future? Uh, uh, who are telling? Can I see? I, I can see. Well, at the end actually. If you yeah. stand up please. Yeah, what, the, what is your question? question? Man, please. The, the hole in the ozone layer, uh, that is due to the, that is man-made uh, only. And that is a matter of concern. So, what is the ramification? Because in the earlier ice age and uh, warm house, uh, there was no such uh, problem that uh, oh, would in the ozone layer or something in the environment. So, uh, you see, there are uh, here also there are different opinions whether there is a hole uh, that is permanent hole or it gets made up because. Uh, in nature, uh, nothing uh, remains void. It always gets filled up. So if there uh, cannot be a hole, if science, we have to believe the science, there cannot be a hole, permanent hole in the ozone layer. There is, that has to be filled up by the uh, environs of ozone. Okay. So first of all thing, and second is whether there is actually a hole because you, you, if you remember this uh, hole in ozone layer it was a, a very uh, top, uh, hot topic uh, two decades back but not now. Because we have got some other uh, elements which, are, uh, easy, which can easily be fed to the men, people. Yeah, and yeah. also the gadget like uh, ozone, uh, CFC free, uh, so many gadgets which are reputation. Yeah. Not you reputation. see, That's if you, if this, uh, all the oils can be burnt also, the art cannot be, get spoiled. Yeah, so first thing. Big Second thing, because uh, mm, this is not the forum for discussion, it will take another uh, session for that. Uh, I can see I have all the slides there. What IPCC claims and why we, the geologists, display, and that I have all the slides. But uh, I can I can give you the assurance that uh, man has very little power to destroy the earth. But what about the intervention of man and <coughs> their comfortable living? What you are seeing, what you are seeing, that is only to the urban areas. Yeah, exactly. And what percentage of urban areas in the whole total earth? It is not even one percent. Mm -hmm. hey, exactly, but but more than that, there are billions and billions of trillions and trillions of sea animals are there. Micro, so many micro animals. Are there. So they release the carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. and similarly, there are plants. The floating on the sea, there is oxygen. Balance is always maintained. Yes. Thanks, Robert. Yes. Uh, you have said that Homo erectus came 200,000 years before. How reliable is this data and what is the basis on which you all are saying that it's 200,000? Because some say it's no. much older. No, no, no. Dating has been done. Dating. Is it carbon dating? No, carbon dating doesn't go that, that far. So what dating is it? Uh, there is so many late dating is there late late and so many there are so many red album dating also there so uh, there are so many datings there uh, okay. uh, some, some institutions they different institutions use different uh, <laughs> the other theory it is more than 200,000 years is wrong is that uh, 200,000 uh, million year 200,000 years yeah you lack yeah too lack homo erectus homo erectus has not come too lack Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens came to that. Homo erectus and Machari. So Homo sapiens have, uh, uh, some are saying it's much older. The Homo sapiens is not much. Rather it is 1.9 to be more precise. 1.93 or 95. Oh. Uh, it is not uh, gone beyond the 2. Can I ask you a question in this context? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the slides that you showed that uh, the the life came 3600 million uh, years ago, is that correct? 3800? 30, yeah. 3800. Uh, what was the reason that I tell you? No, is that correct number that I saw? Yeah. But then, then I, the question is that the, the earth was formed 4 and 4.5 billion years ago. 
So within only span of you know two billion dollars, it could cool enough to get the uh, get the life uh, persisting. Or the numbers or something you know doesn't match actually. It should be very hot at that. Hot, no, hot. Okay. You see, the ocean form after twenty million years. After the earth, earth. Because it is uh, the cooling down of the temperature is extremely fast. Now you see that what was the temperature in 4.6 billion years ago? Now it is only 15 degrees centigrade. No, now it is, but did it cool enough? Was was it cool enough? You know, just up to a two billion years. Uh, yes, later. not only cool enough, but it was enough to have the concentration of H2O in the atmosphere. No, that's okay. Yeah? So all these things are there. So uh, ocean came, uh, ocean dynamics rains came. Ocean formation of ocean took a long time because of the uh, because there is a uh, tremendous uh, formation of uh, water vapor due to, because uh, you see from 41,000, million years to 3,800 million years, there are heavy bombardment of meteorites on yes, earth. Yes. yes. Uh, so for this 300 million years, this heavy bombardment at uh, one, one, one meteorite say about 500 kilometer radius. Uh, so this type of bombardment of meteorites and each meteorite brought uh, water vapor. Yeah, that uh, yes. So this water vapor and the water vapor come out from the uh, mantle through uh, volcanic eruptions. Uh, so all these uh, they uh, cool down the earth uh, very easily. Okay. Any more questions or comments? So as you told, uh, this is the normal phenomenon: this uh, warming and cooling. Yes. So in that case, we should not be worried that uh, global warming, so much discussion, debate, uh, uh, different governments, they are spending so much money, so seminars, so... Actually, actually uh, thing is that, uh, the thing is uh, less scientific, what the propaganda is going on, less scientific, more commercial. Thank you. <laughs> uh, nature, I, I believe nature takes its own course. So naturally, it's sort of a uh, harmonic motion. There. I mean, uh, going from the uh, ice age to the hot era. Uh, so actually, we should not. Uh, thank you, sir, for a nice lecture. First of all, uh, what I was saying is, uh, being from a science background, I just believe that everything takes nature takes its own course. So even if, uh, as you said, man does not have the power to destroy uh, nature, so in case we are feeling very threatened about uh, many things that is going around us, uh, like as you said, that, uh, global warming, I mean, then we can, can we uh, be complacent about the fact that uh, uh, this is just a passing phase? And uh, One thing I can assure you, that what IPCC models are being made, can anyone say that what is greenhouse gas? What is the main uh, product of the greenhouse gas? What is the principal uh, gas is in the greenhouse? Chlorofluorocarbons and the... As they say. It is H2O. 90% H2O. And IPCC never takes H2O into consideration for making its manufactured models. So I have all the slides for that to disclaim all the uh, major claims of IPCC. But one thing, yes, we are releasing more CO2, CO2. But that is not uh, nothing to do because water is there, water vapor is there to absorb. Water vapor is there to absorb in the atmosphere. It is a problem of individuals, man, adaptability with nature, so, yeah. which is really been reflected with this other's way. That we don't like to face any of the deviation of our comfortable life. Now, what to do? Should we shut down our air services? Should we shut down our locomotions? 
Should we shut down everything? Or should we evolve? Or should we evolve? Should we evolve? There is no panic. There is nothing, no reason for pressing a panic button. There is no reason. Because nature has sufficient material to absorb the, all the carbon dioxide. And when it will be there, will be then when the carbon dioxide will be more, the water vapor will absorb it. And the water gets cool. You see, in the last, even 2000 years, 2500 years, how many cooling phases were there? For 400, 500 years. So it will be there. It will be there. What is the earliest changes you have said that there was migration of Homo sapiens because of the change in climate? So there will again be, is there a possibility that there will again be a, you know, a, a transgression or, of Homo sapiens from one part, like uh, in the north? North America, North Europe, Northern Europe, Arctic regions. No, uh, due to the, this uh, warming phase, the Arctic regions are already, the ice is melting down. So people are going there. Now there is a plan for uh, exploration, oil exploration, mineral exploration. And residents will, uh, habitation will grow there. <coughs> it has to. But the water level will go up there. Where? Oceans. Water level will go up. Yeah, due to water level will go up. And inundate lower level. It will inundate. It has to be accepted. Oh, it has to be accepted. Now nobody says to make a resource in Mandarmani within the sea beach. So then within the sea beach, there is a clear instruction that within 500 meters there should not be any construction. It is our fault. We want to suicide ourselves. So there is a fact of global warming then. Huh? What you are confirming that there is global warming in the Arctic is... No, no, there, global is warming up. I told you, it is warming up since last 15,000, there is no nothing new in it. IPCC is not telling any new, but IPCC is feeding you the idea that this is the first time, he has your think is the first time the earth is warming up. That is wrong. That is what my intention is for this lecture. The art is not warming up for the first time. There is a history since its formation and it will go on and this we are passing through a warming phase and in this warming phase there are intermittent cooling phases also for shorter periods. Well, we got to stop here though because the staff has to go home so uh, we cannot wait any longer. So thank you very much for coming in. Thank you, speaker. Thank you.